Hello YouTube, I want to talk a little bit about autogynephilia, AGP. Um, I tried to talk about it a little bit in the beginning of my YouTube videos. Um, I didn't do such a good job. It is a really difficult subject to talk about. It's very controversial and and so on. Um, but um, and mainly part of that is that Autogynephilia is a word that describes a theory that um, is basically used to invalidate the validity of trans women like myself. Um, yeah, and that's a that's a terrible thing. Um, it's a really outdated theory that was, um, I guess, created or whatever it be, uh, between. Uh, 85 to 95 I believe um and um it's not true it's it is so wrong um and I think that my experiences um um are a good example that show why um this theory is so wrong and um So, I mean, basically, I, um, I had a fetish for cross-dressing before, um, before hormones. Hormones changed everything. Um, but, um, and I talked a lot, a lot about it in previous videos, um, so I'm not gonna go too far into it, but, um, but yeah, I had a very extreme fetish for cross-dressing, for my entire life until I began hormones at 35. I mean, from the time puberty hit till till 35 when I began hormones, it was a major force in my life that um, that I was always fighting against, and it made everything very confusing for me, um, not knowing um, if it's just a fetish or am I really trans. Um, there was no way for me to know for sure and it took a lot of time to, I don't know, to think about it and for me to finally um, come to terms with the fact that I had to try something. I had to do something because it um, it spun out of control. Cross-dressing was basically like a drug for me. Um, I, You could say I guess I got a high from it and yeah, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's hard for me to talk about because, um, I'm proud of most things about my life and I don't keep any secrets, but, um, I guess I'm not so proud of that part of my past, but, um, but I, things are different now. Everything is different now. And so anyway, like, it made things so confusing that, that, that I wasn't sure if I was trans or not. Um, even when I began hormones, I wasn't, I would say that when I began hormones, I was like, I was a hundred percent sure that I wanted to try hormones and see like, um, I wanted to like start this path a little bit and see what happens, you know? Um, but I was not a hundred percent sure. I would say I was about 80% sure that I wanted to, um, come out and to try to you know live full time and whatnot and when I got to about three months of um hormones it was about which is also the point where there's basically no return you could say because I think somewhere around three to five months um the effects become permanent or some of the effects become permanent and so um, it is kind of the time that you have to decide if, if you're going back or going forward. Um, so from what I learned, like, there's nothing wrong with trying HRT for a while. Um, but you have to be aware that at a certain point, the, um, the effects become permanent. Um, at least some of them do. So, um, but yeah, around that time, I, I realized, um, 
with absolute certainty that I was on the right path. Um, and that was because the hormones completely took away the, the fetish for cross-dressing. It, it changed everything. The hormones changed my life. Um, it was no longer this force that I was battling with. Um, I finally gave in, <laughs> basically, and um, I stopped fighting it and just let it go and um, embraced who I always wanted to be. Um, what a powerful thing. And, um, and uh, what a powerful lesson, too. So, but if nothing else, I would love to be the example or to, to show, like, that is one of my, one of my goals is to show that, that trans people are people. Um, I'm not gonna fight the arguments of everybody that trans women are women, um, you know, that's a little different, but trans people are people, trans rights are human rights, and, um, and so many people try to act like, um, trans people are a thing, um, they're not, they try to dehumanize us, I feel like, like when people say, you know, she's a trans, or that's a trans, they don't say trans woman, trans girl, trans person, they say a trans, or a tranny is, an, is another, those two words I don't like. Um, I feel like it really dehumanizes us. And and uh, if nothing else, like I would love to show people by my example that trans people are people. And I feel like maybe I'm a good example for that. I'm really normal in a lot of ways, <laughs> I guess, maybe. Um, I mean... I live a pretty ordinary life. I work a full-time job. I'm raising five kids. Um, you know, um, doing everything that everybody else is. I just happen to be trans, okay? And so, you know, that's, I think that's the one message, if any, that I would get out to people. And, um, by extension, like, I feel like I'm a good example of the fact that um, that autogynephilia is, the theory is, is completely twisted, and it's very out of date, and it's very damaging to, um, to our community, to my community, um, it's very damaging, and it, and it's a real shame, because, um, here I am using the word, which in a way helps to propel um, the validity of that word. Like just using that word makes it heard more, makes people know about it more, and then people use that word more. I wish that we could just stop using that word. But the problem is it's been so established at this point and that um, no other word like... Um, there is no other word that people, like, know of that makes them think of this, like, uh, not a widely used word, like, I've been thinking about what a replacement could be, and, um, fetish for cross-dressing, it would be, like, the closest thing, like, mm, um, I wish that we could just get rid of that word and the whole theory, or, or something, I don't know, but it's quite a large fight, um, or it would be a large battle to fight, um, so, and, um, you know, I don't know if, if I'm the one for that, um, I don't think I am, but my, my experiences, that, that's all I can do, is I can tell you guys about my experience, and, and I do believe that my experiences help to prove that that theory is wrong, and, um, I mean, here I am, um, I'm over three years hormones, I've had several surgeries already, and have several more lined up, and I've been full-time for two and a half years, um, I went from exclusively dating women to exclusively dating men, and, I mean, my whole life has changed, and, um, it's, 
it has nothing to do with um, the fetish of cross-dressing. That completely went away when when hormones hit. And this has this goes into my sexuality, which could be a whole other video in itself. But um, but I the only way that it makes sense is that. is that maybe I wasn't attracted to women before. Maybe I, the, the whole idea of me being with a woman or, well, there were two parts to it. I guess one part was having a woman made me normal and, and it fulfilled the expectations of everybody, right? Um, which was what I was doing my whole life. I was supposed to be a guy, so I was a guy and you're supposed to date women, so I dated women. And I think the other part of it, the only, like, real pleasure I think that I was getting out of it um, is being with a woman helped me to I guess visualize or um, help me to learn like what their experience is see so I think like being intimate with a woman, I was often thinking about what it would be to be her and not myself. Um, there's a quote that I heard once that really stuck with me, and it, it I'm going to mess this up, but it's something like, um, for me to orgasm, I had, my brain had to leave my body so that I could let the poison out. For me to orgasm, my brain had to leave my body to let the poison out. I'm sure I got that a little wrong, at least, but that was basically it. And um, and that, like, fit me so well. I feel like um, having sex was, was a release, like, that I felt like I had to do to get to get the poison out in some ways and and I had to take my mind out of my body to let that happen um so yeah that, that's a whole nother complicated long story all of this is a really long story like this video could go on and on forever but I don't want to do that I want to make just a little short video and kind of touch on the subject and um if anybody has questions or suggestions or whatever please feel free to drop them in the comments um i need some direction here i've got a lot to talk about i just don't know like um what to talk about or like where even to begin um but if you guys are interested to know i would encourage you to go back and look at some of my older videos maybe i don't know they're really cringy for me i can't watch them um <laughs> And I messed up so badly with my older videos. Like, there's so many things I got wrong. Um, but I think that's that's what this channel has been about for me. And and I think in some ways it's unavoidable um, when you're doing YouTube videos, like blogging about your life for so long. At some point, especially like during in something like this, a transition. At some point, like your your opinions and the way you think of things are going to change so much that um, you're inevitably gonna get many things wrong and um, and I did I got so many things wrong <clears throat> and and I wish I could take it back like so many things that I said um, I've been so close to just deleting the older videos but I don't want to do that um, I just want to make better videos and keep pushing the back one, the old ones back into the back um, so i don't know maybe don't watch the old videos um but i mean i don't know if you are like interested in about that I, or at least like like i said in the fact that um my experience has helped to disprove autogynephilia and i stand by that and i feel like i'm a good example of that and if you watch my videos from the past till now and learn about my experiences from then till now and all the little details, it helps to illustrate that point very well. I'm not as good at describing it to you guys, like, scientifically and whatnot. Um, you know, I, I, and there are better people 
there are other people who have done it much, done that much better. Julia Sereno, she is the best um, person to um, defend us against the uh, theory that Ray Blanchard came up with, um, for sure. She is the go-to one. She's done several videos and has written a paper on it. Um, I couldn't do that. I don't. Yeah, I, I. There's no way that would never be me. It's not my expertise. But what I can do is share my experiences with you guys, and um, I'm happy to do so. <sighs> Thanks for watching my video. I love you guys. Take care and peace.